Hey there, how's it going? Well, oh. <laughs> sounds like we're getting some a little bit of wind, and I forgot the wind guard, so hopefully it won't be too bad. But uh, the ice cream truck is driving me nuts. But uh, I miss those old ones that actually were. Uh, it was a uh, an amplified music box, pretty much, and uh, I miss those. I thought those were cool. Um, these new ones, it's just like, man, it's a really, really bad, lame video game because it's using, uh, uh, you know, a, a well-known song instead of even being able to have uh, some sort of artist come in and, <laughs> and write a song for it. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking about how when it comes to the whole SJW, anti-SJW mindset. It's plural. Put an S on there. Plural. <laughs> um, mindset. Somerset. Um, but when it comes to those mindsets, each side does have some valid things to say. And one of the things that upsets me a bit at times is when those on the anti-SJW side won't consider anything unless it is the traditional view. You know, unless it does continue the same status quo that we have. Anything that veers from it, some, some are just like, oh no. And some of what, where I think of that is, uh... Okay, there are different groups of people who hate Anita Sarkeesian for, for very different reasons. And one of the main ones, well, Okay, we've got people who hate her content. Then we have people who hate her. Then we have people who even hate... No matter who it was that was talking about the subject, they would hate it too. You know, even if someone was being reasonable about the subject, they would hate it too. They would say it's all rubbish. And... To the people who say that it's just all rubbish, there's no relevance to any of that, any of the stuff mentioned, ever, in her videos about video games, I'm just like, are you serious? You're gonna deny that much of what is pretty obvious? Um, it's just that it needs to be brought up. Let's say when it comes to to the the. Uh, just just showing something that instead of pushing, oh, women, women, no, just talk about how all characters are sexualized in games. And what effects do those things have on, on society? What effects do they have on kids? You know, I, there are some things that people will learn from video games and might even start to do, and it's if there is a uh, a concept that the game shoves forth. If there is a way to bring up a subject, if some of the, the script has some something in it that shows people a different way of approaching a subject, and they might get influenced that way, even if it is a bad character, um, you know, supposed to be the bad character, um, they still might have something. They still might have an intelligently written uh, script to where the character can actually say things that might make people think, even though it's the bad character. That stuff will influence kids. That stuff will influence people, just like movies do. I mean, any movie, if it has any sort of singular vision, in it 
which a lot of the new movies don't have much of that kind of thing going on anymore. Um, but if a movie has a singular vision of some sort, a visionary that's that's imagining this world and the way things take place, and um, then they can spread their mindset around. Because that's kind of what, what art is. It's a different way of, of, of showing someone the way you view the world and the way that you look at things. Music, art, any of that stuff. It is a massive expression of how, you, how the person who made it views the world and views how to approach something. So, you know, most movies to some degree... Man, that damn ice cream truck. Most movies to some degree will be pushing forth some sort of moral. Pushing forth that, hey, look at this kind of mindset. Um, <laughs> it's so annoying. The old ones weren't as annoying. It wasn't eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Can you be more obnoxious? Can't you please? Could you be more obnoxious now? Okay. <laughs> Um, but there are definitely things that can affect uh, how we look at some things. And there are people that, that try to claim that there is... The, when, when characters, when people are sexualized only in very specific ways, uh, that that doesn't have an effect on us. Or the imagery that we continually see and is what is propped up in the movie and things can be propped up just from the framing um, there there, is, there are so many studies about how people think of something when something is in a certain place I don't know like like there have been studies where someone will be doing a uh, uh, they're tested on this but they don't realize they've been tested on this um, so, you know, all these reactions are watched, and there are spots in a room where someone can stand. If, they're, if they're, someone's giving a speech, there are spots in the room that someone can stand that will give them much more attention. People just suddenly pay attention, just in this, somehow, in our psyche, there are spot things like that. But then you get bored and you have to walk a little bit and move to another spot, and then eventually come back to that sweet spot again. Excuse me. Movies are filled with this. There, there's so much study done on this. Um, and it's done to such a hyper degree now, especially in things like commercials. Uh, it happens so fast we don't even realize it. In, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, it was... I imagine it was some point in the late 60s, but it maybe it was earlier than that, maybe it was a little later than that. Um, I thought I remember reading that it was in the, around that period. Is, uh, it was made illegal to have subliminal type of advertising where, um, it, I think, I don't know whether it was in a movie theater, it was on television, I don't know which, but one frame was basically enjoy Coca-Cola. And you just barely saw it for a blip. And that was made illegal. That was later made illegal. And... So, so much of the way that things are advertised is trying to get around that. Um... Because there's certain elements, you know, well, if that's, that's subliminal in that particular way, then you can't make, you can't have the commercial do that. So instead we have things like, uh... You know, oh, with, with, with Slim Fit, um, I went from this, and it shows a person, no makeup, uh, a, a really, really frumpy dress, and they're like, and just, 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 just like, I'm the town, the sad clown. And uh, 
then it shows to, I went from this to this, and it shows them all happy wearing a wedding dress. And it's like, I mean, I mean, this stuff is so obvious. A lot of the commercials we even play on about how obvious that sort of thing is. It's part of what makes the commercial fun to watch. So we, we know this, but it, we still see it. It still has its bit of effect on us. And the same thing can apply to, um, like, a web page will seem hard to use if they put all of the options in the spots that most web pages put ads. Now let's put all the important options in that spot. And the website seems hard to use because we're used to blocking out certain parts of web pages. Now if you use ad block, you still have certain spots that you know the ads would have been. Um, you know, we... There are commercials that are made based on the fact that we try to block them out. Let me brighten this up a little bit. I'm gonna brighten your day. Hi. Okay, um... Yeah, so they know that we're gonna block it out, but they do particular things, so during the process of trying to block it out, we still remember it. Or we remember enough of it that when we see a certain occurrence happen, suddenly we think of that product. Even if it's some little tiny blip in our heads just for a moment, we've thought about that product, and that's what commercials are supposed to do. They're supposed to make you think of a product during certain times. In the 80s, if you ever saw someone jumping in the air a certain way, you'd think, uh, uh, oh, what a feeling Toyota, you know. But there are a lot of things that affect us that we don't want to admit to affecting us. Um, that's why when uh, people do make the argument that, oh, well, being gay is absolutely uh, a genetic, and I'm like, well, you know, I, I, it might not be that way. I mean, in the same way that, you know, commercials will, will work on certain parts of us, there are other things that we do instinctively without thinking about it, and some of those are our self defense mechanisms. They're, they're just automatic. And there's a chance that out of a self-defense mechanism uh, that someone does not control, then the situations that they are around, the environment that they're around, could have a huge degree to do with whether that defense mechanism goes up. This isn't, this, you know, it, People don't want to look at that because, oh, well, then the, the, the Christians can use that as, well, they still can't use it any more, any more than they do now because no matter what, it's not a conscious choice. You don't sit there and think, oh, I think I'll do this. No, it's, it's just, it's this automatic defense mechanism. It's part of what we are as animals. Um, and I believe the same can occur for the other animals out there as well, that it could be easily just when we see gay animals. It could be just part of a defense mechanism based on something when it was, uh, you know, growing up. So, um, and I don't have any sort of issue with that. And, and there's some, some people have a real hard time with the idea of, of being abnormal. But then, and see, and that's, that's why I think this might even be happening. I would just, um, why so many, so much of the youth is intent on being not normal. You know, the idea is to be as not normal as you can. So it's like celebrating the opposite of what the generation before them was always so scared of. I just realized that, right, just, just now when I'm making this, I'm going, well, that makes sense. You know? But... And so maybe that's a way that we could tackle some of this. I'm just thinking, you know, if we... If we prove by example that we are not afraid to be not normal. You know, so many of us have it in our heads that um, being not normal is bad. 
Well, the youth right now, they don't have that nearly as much. And they want, they, I think they see the older generations and go, what are you so uptight about with this stuff? With certain things. Like I said, with this feeling of, oh, if I'm different, it's bad. And we never say it outright. People never just blatantly say it. It's, it's in what we do. It's that same thing of, you can tell who someone is by the things that, they, you know, that they do. You don't have to talk with them. You don't have to have a big conversation with them. You could never hear them talk ever and still know about what makes them tick. And you've got body language and there's, there's just some stuff that's assumed. We wouldn't have to have language and still have this phenomenon. So, phenomenon, it's just ways of communicating. Phenomenon? Um... So, we could tell... I'm getting beat up, bit up like crazy on my legs by mosquitoes. <laughs> but we'll know that people are uncomfortable at these times, comfortable at these other times, and we learn from the older people that way. So, maybe that says that that particular element of the youth right now um, might have that screw in a little tighter than most of us do from the older generations. The reason why I'm even saying some of this stuff is a lot of the anti-SJWs are so intent on anything never verging from the norm uh, that people pushing forth a message of uh, just be yourself, be weird, celebrate your freak flag, enjoy yourself kind of message still will end up setting uh, uh, triggering some anti-SJWs. I obviously mostly side, I, I'm definitely more towards the side of anti-SJW, but I'm not going to discount some of the things that are valid about, you know, once in a great blue moon, <laughs> uh, they have something right. Man, I'm getting bit up. I've not gotten bit up this bad. I probably have got 20 bites just from sitting here. Um, man. Man, they're so bad this year. I think there's a swarm. I think I'm gonna, f uh, I think I'm just gonna end the video. I don't know what else to say now anyway, so. <laughs>